Hello everyone and welcome back to Prodigal Overland. My name is Brad. If you're new here, welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be doing and showing you how we install a Chief Products off-road bumper, okay? So in doing this, I really felt like I needed to kind of clarify a few things and give you guys some stuff up front right away, okay? Number one, um, Chief Products makes, really does make fantastic stuff. For sure um, great great quality stuff without a doubt we have been able to wheel and take our Grand Cherokee places that we would not have been able to go apart from the the gear from chief products it's it truly I think is some of the best made well-designed stuff that you can get for a WK2 platform on the market bar none I, I honestly and truly believe that that's one Second thing is we've been getting a lot of comments or we've been seeing some feedback in like what is going on with Chief as far as, you know, people have trying to reach out and are not hearing back. We have good friends that have been out with us on the trail that were waiting for releases of, of different things or had questions that they emailed and they're not hearing stuff back. And because of our relationship with Chief Products, we have people kind of asking like, hey, what's going on? Um, and, and truly and honestly, like, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, we've been brand ambassadors or actually were in brand ambassadors with chief products for about two years from September of 2020 to September of 2022. So just a few months ago that I guess officially ended. And honestly, chief has been really good to us. Um, Bill and Samantha, I don't know if you guys have any feedback with them, but they're great. They're great people. Like they, they truly are amazing. And they've got, I think, a good team behind them. Um, but as of today, in prepping for this video, when I went on to their America site to kind of get some more information on the actual install, if you go to Chief Products as of November 18th at 1.51 p.m., like their America site still isn't like active. Uh, I had an email, there's like there's an eagle there and it says 2016. I don't even know what that means. It's 2022. Um, I had an email back with Samantha a little bit while back and she just kind of hinted there was some distribution issues. Honestly, truly not sure what's going on there. She had said the site was going to be up and in fact it had been up for a while. Um, and now it's back to the Eagle. So unfortunately I don't really have any updates for you guys on that other than to say, um, if you can get a hold of their stuff, it's great. And they care a lot about what they're putting into their product and, and Bill and Samantha, I would, I mean, anybody from Chief over there, it'd be great to have you guys comment if you're seeing this video. I think it would really help. Um, and if I have a way to pin it on top of this video, I would be glad to do that. But you got a lot of people that like your stuff and are just trying to figure out what's going on. So, hope everything's going well there. That's what I have on just backstory, I guess I would say, with this bumper install. So let's get to that because I really want to try to give you folks um just like if and when you can get a hold of this like what are some good tips and trips on on installing this off-road bumper so we ran um the lower front guard from chief products for a couple years and it it performs really really well most of the stuff let's do this actually um and there she is i mean we <laughs> I have people asking all the time about this. Yes, it's still here. And fat guys, um, it's November, first weekend in December. We're gonna have a little wheeling trip in South Carolina with some friends. And this just told Lauren, like we're, we have to drive both vehicles. They will be there. So we're gonna try this bumper out. I should stop walking. I'm sure I'm crunching. But guys, everything on our Jeep at this point is from Chief Products. The hidden winch mounts, the recovery points, um, We've got the roof rack up there. Their rock rails have been just incredibly solid, solid, solid pieces of equipment and have fond memories attached to the bumps and, and, and all of that. We have in the back, we've got the lower rear bumper guard. Um, so again, guys, like good, good quality stuff. Lauren has already... I joke with my wife sometimes that the way she seems to park at where we're at now is she just drives forward until she hits something. So it's already had a couple bumps and scrapes on this bumper and, and it seems 
Seems like it's holding up fine. All right, so let's get into the actual install, things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have, things that you need, okay? Number one, get the instructions downloaded. I will put a link to them in this video description. Even if the America site is down and you wanna look at them, you can access them through the Australian site. You just go to cheapproducts.com um, and when it says what shop, hit the Australian one, I think, and find the bumper and the instructions are there. But like I said, I will also link it. There's 92, 92 steps if you did everything from start to finish but some of it's like a choose your own adventure like what do you have what are you installing go to this step like you're kind of bouncing around so definitely the instructions are written as if you have a you know what to do if you've got stuff from chief already on you know what to do if you've got nothing so they really try to incorporate anything and everything that you would do up front including their hidden winch mount um, their recovery hooks lower front guard if that needs to come off stuff stuff like that um, lower front guard and this are not compatible so if you've got that just realize you're swapping one for the other uh, what else would I say you will need to kind of change some of the if you already have a hidden winch mount that's the big part you got like brackets under there that need to be swapped out wasn't too bad uh, what else is up front here um, I think that might be Oh, and the recovery points, right? So the stock recovery points, you will not be able to use stock recovery hooks with this whole setup. You will need to get theirs as well. Um, and I think, if again, if you go to the website, they list out what's compatible and what's not. Second thing on part of this is make sure you look at the tools. Having the right tools um, in any project is helpful, right? Especially with the stuff from Chief, I find that like having, a lot of times I need a little wrench or a little something that's, there's a lot of wiggling. And so just read through, they have a list of what you need. Make sure you have it first don't do what I sometimes do and just kind of like get halfway into things and like oh my gosh I need this and then we run running off I've learned at least not to tear my vehicle apart the Grand Cherokee part before without having another vehicle I could take to the store to get whatever I've forgotten I need so just read through that it's there it's helpful there are pictures in the instructions so please don't just watch this install video and think okay I'm gonna run out and just follow what Brad did that's not the purpose of this video because we had to change and modify too many things. So this video is to give you guys a, a strong idea and we do kind of step it through how we did it, but realize that unless you had the exact setup, including a twisted subframe and stuff like that, unless you've got that exact stuff, you won't be able to follow this video step by so step. So here we go. Here is our Grand Cherokee and its current configuration. So we're gonna need to kind of unwire and unhook the light bar the bull bar is not compatible with the off-road bumper. I think the recovery hooks are, and then the lower front guard is not. So lower front guard's going away, bull bar, and then there is some bumper trimming or lower front bumper that we're gonna have to do. And then we've got a pile of boxes to kind of work through and see how things go. So we're gonna get started first. I'm just gonna take off some of this old equipment and then we'll go from there all right guys so i was able to get the bull bar off the light bar off next we're going to take this whole front bumper off um so there's a couple clips up here that need to come out um and then we've got some along the side in the fender well itself there's i don't know if you can see there we go there's a bolt here there's these little push pins that come out, um, and then I have some down here. Now, just a note, I've had this thing off several times, so um, I've replaced plastic rivets and, and that. So your front bumper, if you're doing this for the first time, some of the fasteners might look a little bit different. Let's see if I can show you this side, yeah, it's better. So, got coming out here, come on now, right there working your way down and then along the side here, this trim kind of gently pops out. You do want to be careful because these are, what holds these in can break pretty easily. So when I get to that, I'll show you, but I'm gonna work on taking this front section off next. So here you go, I've taken out the screw. There is on the side, these clips, there's one, two, three, four in, in the bumper itself here till you get to the seam. And then there were two pins, one, two, a screw. Now it says to take these two out as well. Um, I'm gonna leave them there for now because 
I'm not sure why they would need to come out, but stay tuned. Maybe they do. So I'm going to do that on both sides and see if we can keep moving forward. And up top, there's two pins to pull here. I already took this one out. And then I, I think we just got to kind of, there's clips all along here that you got to kind of work out. And it could be they want you to pull these just to give you, oh, geez, there you go. You can see I've already redone some of this. So um, it'll separate along that seam. Let's see if I can get this done. All right, guys, so I got this just about all ready to come off. It's just kind of hanging here. A couple tips. Yeah, you, you do want to remove those top two here. These clips here will just make this trim portion easier to come out because it overlaps a little bit, and there's these, these dumb blue clips that slip in here. Um, honestly, they're such a pain in the butt. It's very hard to remove these without breaking the clips. So if you were able to do that, consider yourself like super lucky because it is very difficult to do um, but you gotta kind of bend this back enough to allow this to come out once you get it started on the side the section up under the headlight all I did was kind of raise from the bottom and that just lines things up easier and makes it makes it real easy like this is just about ready to come off so again watch your sensors over here so I'm gonna get a a hand here as I bring this down to so I don't pull sensor cords but it's again trim pieces comes along here clips two clips up top it's about ready to come off and then round and these dumb blue clips on the side so I'm looking up under the bumper this is your plug for the fog lights this is the plug for the parking sensors if you've got that so Instructions tell you to remove these clips before you take the bumper off. Um, I think before I took the bumper off and was just real careful and then unplugged things for better access. But um, either way, just be careful. These clips will need to be unplugged to, to allow the bumper to come off. So here's those fog lights if you got those that you have to get these clips. So I have Lauren holding it for me. Um, so I can get these undone and then there is the parking sensor clip on the other side. So you just kind of want to be careful with all of that. So we are in the middle of putting on Chief Products bumper. It's been a while since I had the front plastic bumper off. This here, I know exactly where that's from. This is South Dakota dirt for sure that clay when we were stuck in stuck in the mud still kind of loaded up in the winch cradle so we get to clean that out too all right so let me show you guys we've got the bumper off i'm in the process of taking off the lower front guard which we already had and this piece here is part of it and so the issue i'm having now is we got to try to slide this piece out if I can get this piece out and then just put the screws for the recovery hook back up, that's great. Otherwise, I kind of feel like if I can't do that, I'm going to have to kind of take all of this the whole cradle out and kind of start from scratch, which I might end up having to do anyway. But So right now we're just taking the bottom two screws out of this recovery point, hoping that we can slide this piece out because this will be the last piece of the lower front guard this mounting bracket here that would have to come off so stay tuned we've gone ahead and kind of freed the winch a little bit to gain access these big brackets here like I know for a fact we need to replace these so we're in the process of undoing one side my strong hope is that we won't have to completely take the winch off unwire it take the cradle out and all that but uh, we might. The instructions are the, from Chief are as if none of this is already installed. So it, you might have to. I don't know, but we're about to find out. I have one more bolt in this chassis chassis mount. I've got my high lift holding up the cradle. Hopefully that works. And actually, the last piece of lower front guard slid right out there once I had the last screw out and this loose so hopefully um, 
again, my strong hope still is that I can just somehow swap this one piece one at a time and not have to rewire and take that out and, and all that. So we'll see. So for the uh, chassis mount and holding the winch cradle, I realized that there is a small bolt right in there already connected. So I just put that one back in to hold the cradle where it was. We completely undid the chassis mount, which dropped um, the other pieces out, which we'll have to reassemble, but the cradle stays right, right where it was. So that's good news for me. All right, the next section here is we kind of make this sandwich with the recovery. Basically, you have your recovery point here on the bottom, a slab spacer, then this is, I think they call it the, the chassis mounting plate, and then another one on top. Um, I will say, because we were working with a bull bar, like we've just done so many different <laughs> swapping. So we had the bull bar, which is not compatible, and the bull bar in the center section had a little piece and then the mounting for that. Um, so we can't use that anymore. So now I had these from a prior, I think the hooks, slab so we're using that in here um putting it back in but i i think i remember it going a little further out whatever piece was originally with the recovery point um, but this is what i have so that's what we're going to use so we're looking at the new chassis mount Okay, we were able to stack up the plates that we needed. Everything's kind of finger tight at this point. We got one chassis mount, new one installed. The reason you need a new one is because if you look here on the side, this is where the, the lower bumper or the new uh, chief bumper is gonna kind of mount to. There's brackets that go here and these were not drilled out on the original chassis mount, which is why we had to replace them. So we are on, this is step 46, installing the bumper, off-road bumper mounts. So, yeah, bumper mounts. So, so far we've got, there's basically two shorter bolts that kind of come up here. You kind of, clearance wise, you can see why you need a shorter one in here. So you'll have shorter ones that go top here, bottom here. For clearance wise, they say hand tighten only. Make sure that your curve is coming out because um, there's, a, there's a left and a right. So you just want to make sure that as you put these wings on, they're coming out. All right, so just to show you guys again, the two sh of the shorter ones are in here with the lock washers, top and bottom. Then there's three of the ones that are slightly longer up front. So far, these bottom two are down. Make sure you have them oriented the right way. We briefly put them on upside down. So you should have two mounting holes here. And this is kind of sloped to the side like that. And as we said before, it's angled out. Okay, guys, so just a little update here. We did get the fair lead on in the back. So we're looking at the back of the bumper. There's basically two bolts to stick the fair lead on here. I did have to cut my winch line just because of the kind of thimble I have on there. So I'll end up splicing the line back together. I have a whole video on that. So when I get to that portion, I'll just link the video. Um, we did confirm that kind of the bumper fits on. One of my concerns is we have a, where these bolt into our, our subframe and got a little bit bent. Um, so we just kind of held it up to see and I think it's gonna work out fine. So we're gonna do the Nomad grill in the center here. We can kind of show you what we got going on. We actually have the Apex center and the Nomad grill and I'm hoping the Nomad will give me a little bit more clearance when I need to get to the clutch on the bottom of the winch. We'll show that because it looked like the Apex, I get my hand in there, but kind of barely. So I'm hoping the Nomad gives me a little bit more room to do that. Um, but yeah, let's show you what we got going on here. So these, this is the back of the bumper. Um, and so Lauren just kind of set up, you should probably tell him, I don't know what you did. Well, you've got two brackets here that you're gonna put in place then this piece just kind of slides up and you're just and then I just I'm using a 10 millimeter an socket answer. and an allen wrench here which um, was not provided I just had the kit so you're gonna need that just to kind of tighten these up here 
as far as I can tell, these are just, I mean, it's just for looks. I don't know that there's too much functional about this, um, other than maybe it protects your your uh, radiator up, up in the front a little bit mm -hmm. from stones and all that. But definitely it's kind of a modular system. So we're gonna start with this, see how it works. And then later on, if we want to switch to the other Apex insert, we could do that as well. So we just slid on the off-road bumper after we did the Nomad grill inserts. I have plenty of room to get to the clutch here under my winch. I have it clocked, so you can see it's up in there. Plenty of room for my hand on the Nomad. They tell you to leave these really loose here. They're, I was concerned we wouldn't have room to tighten things here, but you definitely do. Um, so it's a couple more bolts down here. There'll be some on the very bottom. It bolts into the winch cradle here. Um, and apparently I forgot to tighten a nut. So I'm not hoping we don't have to take it all the way off. Okay, so we had a little bit of an ordeal getting the bumper lifted into place. The one thing uh, that was kind of a challenge was as you're lifting it, you can see how close it is to the tow hooks there. And so when you're trying to get it into place, because this part sticks out right here, you can't just slide straight in. So you kind of have to have it slightly lifted and then go directly forward, but you can't bring one side in before you bring the other side in. So you're gonna want two people for this unless you've got really good um, control but you can see we really kind of took a little bit off of our that was already there but we were scraping our recovery points um, so when you lift this on you want to make sure this still stays loose because you've got to get this top flange here let's see if we can see it in the dark on the inside and then the bottom one down here this one has to be on the outside and then the, the bumper part has to slide in. So you have a piece going in and then a piece going out up here. Um, so if you keep this loose, you can kind of get a little bit of play to slide it in. So we have this about all together. It, again, with these bolts, as loose as you can, definitely gonna want two people. There's always tight spaces, a lot of finagling. Um, some of our bushcraft in here I probably won't point out, but ideally three bolts up at the top, 16 millimeters in here for the bumper, two in the bottom, again two in the bottom down here, three up top here, and then you've got your two winch bolts connecting, and now I'm got to do the bottom along the bottom up under here, along there. Uh, yeah, to the subframe. So that's what's next. So we basically have it secured up underneath. I have a pretty bent subframe here, so I, we're going to hold off on the bottom because it's not lining up really good. <laughs> but it's on. Now we're going to put the, it says for the Trailhawk models, we can just put the bumper, plastic bumper back on and it should kind of work out and might not need any trimming. But in the interest of time and making this thing whole, we're going to try to stick this back on. So here's a view of it installed with the plastic bumper back on, basically just reversed everything. A couple quick notes here, two cuts. Uh, we sliced kind of here in the bumper and then same on the other side. Also, the kit does come with um, clips to help bring this plastic fascia closer to the metal to kind of clean that look up, if that's important to you. Uh, honestly, not so much to us, but just know that that's a part of this kit as well. Also, on the underside of this bumper are two kind of wings to help protect from, from stones and stuff getting kicked up. There's a, you know, a cover over your windshield wiper bottle, which if you or once you look at this, you'll see hangs pretty low. They do kind of cover and shield that with this bumper. Overall, this bumper has a lot of modularity, a lot of different options, grill inserts, colors, uh, light bars that you can kind of go with and, and really customize this and make it your own. Um, 
here in a week or so. We're going to have this out on the trails, really kind of wheel with it, see how it does. We've not had this Grand Cherokee back out on the trails since we've installed this, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, but yeah, overall, just a really good finished out bumper. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, and we will see you guys again real soon.